It's Wednesday night and right about now it feels quite a long way away till uh, till the weekend. But I'm really, really getting pumped for this boxing this weekend. And yeah, it's, it's probably um, the most entertaining action. Well, certainly the action I've most been looking forward to for, for quite some time with the end of the season and, and everything like that. But yeah, I'm here tonight to talk about Dillian White versus um, Brian Minto. It's been quite a long day at work, so I'm on the I'm on the premium strength stuff tonight. Uh, school night, so I'll be sticking to you know no more than five or six. But uh, yeah, help to to make the evening pass, I guess. But yeah, we're here to talk about Dillian White and Brian Minto. Now, I've had a few discussions about this fight. Uh, I did a little video when the um, Dominic Gwynn fight got pulled out. Uh, I did a bit of a chat about this with my brother in our video earlier on this week. Um, but I wanted to talk about it in more detail. Um, yeah, Brian Minto is a solid enough opponent. He's actually got some relatively decent form when he used to fight in the cruiserweight division. And although he's nothing more than a, a journeyman, most likely at this stage of his career, um, he's possibly a journeyman who still has some minor ambitions of his own you know for example I believe he's been in the uh, the prize fighter tournaments and the super eight tournaments and you know things of that nature he's entered tournaments tournaments where you've got to win in order to get paid so he's someone who still has a bit of a desire and he's someone who has performed with credit on occasions and credit that suggests a level of durability uh, the obvious example is that he recently went seven rounds I believe by with Joseph Parker and in that fight, Minto actually retired. You know, he didn't get stopped out. He didn't get knocked out cold by Joseph Parker. Uh, you know, and there's a direct line of form there because the last guy Dillian White fought, B2 Costa Jr., he got absolutely laid out by Joseph Parker. You know, he got left on the floor, sort of, um, you know, out cold. Uh, and obviously, Dillian White was able to stop him in one round. So I'm hoping that this will be more of a test for Dillian White than that. And I'm hoping it'll be a step up in terms of level of opposition. Realistically, however, I don't see this as a competitive fight and I don't see Minto really having the skills and um, on this occasion having the capability to trouble White. You know, Minto took this fight on 10 days notice, I believe. Um, he's a cruiserweight. He's not typically in the best of shape fighting at heavyweight at the best of times, let alone on 10 days notice, you know, flying over here being jet lagged, having to do press conferences, having to do weigh-ins, etc. You know, 10 days notice is actually less than 10 days notice, you know. In terms of how many days you've actually got to train, it's probably more like three or four. So I personally don't believe that Brian Minto at his best can trouble Dillian White. I don't think he's big enough, I don't think he hits hard enough, and quite frankly, I don't think he's got the skills. Um, but... You know, at this stage of his career where he's kind of been reduced to journeyman status and the fact that he's taking this on such late notice, um, you know, I don't necessarily see him lasting very long, I'm afraid. And uh, the other thing I'd say is in boxing, I think momentum is, is really, really key. Uh, and it's not just momentum in terms of who's got a winning record, you know, who's on an undefeated streak. It's momentum in terms of the direction that someone's career is going in. And right now, Brian Minto's career is going like that you know, slowly sliding downwards, whereas Dillian White is going up and up and up. And, you know, we know that at the end of this fight, there's a pot of gold, there's a sort of the British title, there's a fight with Anthony Joshua. And if Dillian White was to beat Anthony Joshua, which conceivably he could do, if Dillian White beats Anthony Joshua, then we've got to start talking about Dillian White against Tyson Fury, Dillian White against Vladimir Klitschko, Dillian White against Deontay Wilder, my point is that Dillian White is at the minute only two fights away from being discussed in that company. You know, there's a huge motivation from there. He's upped his game. He's been training harder than ever. Um, you know, we know he's got Jonathan Banks in his corner who he's working with. And, you know, a lot of people think that's a, certainly a positive move. So Dillian White's momentum is going up and up and up. There's huge incentive for Dillian White to win this fight. And it would be a disaster for his career, for his bank balance, uh, for his longevity in the sport, should he lose to Brian Minto. Brian Minto, he's had his day. He's on the downward slide. Um, and, you know, the timing isn't right for him. Timing's so key in boxing. Here in Dillian White, you've got a guy in the peak of his boxing career, whereas you've got a Brian Minto 
who's fighting in the wrong weight class in my opinion, who's taking the fight on short notice. So I personally believe that White's going to win this fight and it wouldn't surprise me if he doesn't, you know, Leon White's never been beyond four rounds in his career. You know, he's never gone into the fifth round. And I don't necessarily think that Brian Minto's going to be the guy to take him into round five. I just don't think Brian Minto's got either the skills or the sort of, you know, I just don't feel it's right for Brian Minto to last wrong. You know, he's not going to be in the best shape. He's not going to be physically um, conditioned to, to be where he needs to be in order to go with with Dillian White for that period of time. So I'm viewing this as a Dillian White win. I'm viewing it as a fairly comfortable win for Dillian. Yeah, we know Dillian hits fairly hard. We've seen him do well against some semi-durable opposition. You know, that beat Costa Jr. went the distance with uh, Christian Hamer. Uh, he went quite a few rounds with David Price. Dillian White got him out of there. Um, Dillian White got Nos Nascimento out of there faster than uh, Tyson Fury. Uh, Nascimento had previously gone distance with Eddie Chambers. So we know Dillian White can, you know, fight and beat and knock out some guys who are relatively durable. And I think that Brian Minto doesn't have enough to, to stop that train and stop that momentum Dillian White's got. I predict it being an early night's work for Dillian. Second round, third round, fourth round knockout, something like that. And for people going to the show, um, you know, I wish I could join you. Um, it looks like it's going to be a really entertaining night of boxing I was trying to get my brother to go with me but uh, yeah he wasn't keen he got a better offer so uh, anyway that's a story for another day but um, yeah for those who are going I hope you enjoy it I fear um, that it may be an early night for you I don't think you're going to have a problem catching the last train home because would it surprise you if the two main events went no more than two or three rounds between them possibly not let me know your thoughts on this fight how do you see it going could Minto cause an upset could Minto go the distance against Dillian White? Many thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this, please give the video a thumbs up. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you're not already. I've got a few things in the pipeline that uh, I hope you're not going to miss out on. Uh, I'm off to finish my point. I hope to speak to you soon.